Hey everybody, we are back. The Hurricane HQ with our 10.35 p a.m. Sorry about that. Tropical update for July 28th, 2020. And today's news is Invest 92L now has a 90% chance of developing into a depression in the next five days and a 80% in the next two days. So as you can see here, this is the general direction Invest 92L will be taking. It will begin to move, I would say, northwest around now and will affect the West Indies, Puerto Rico in the next day or two. And we're going to take a look at our forecasts for wind speed, radar, spaghetti models, all coming up in the video. But first, let's take a look at our comment of the day. And the comment of the day today is from Drip Boys. Hope I'm saying that correctly. And he said that Florida's luck will soon run out, is what they believe. And yeah, everybody, thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. And we just reached nine subscribers. And my goal for now is 10 subscribers. <laughs> and yeah, um, continue to comment because you can get your comment put on our video. So now we're gonna take a look at the official forecast. Our two day forecast. And here's the storm. And you can see a little bit of a build up of an eye. And right now, as you can see, it's actually quite long. There's a lot of impacts, including Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, uh, West Indies, Windward Islands, whatever you like to say. Um, it's about 500 miles away from here. And it was a few thousand miles away at one point and I remember those days and right now it's moving west northwestward sorry that's the correct way direction at 15 to 20 miles per hour so now we're just going to take a look at our five day again I know we've already looked and again it's moving generally west northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour so now I'd like to just jump into our windy.com forecast because earlier today what I actually spotted was tropical depression force winds. So let's zoom in here too far right here and let's place our thing right here. We have 40 mile per hour. This is officially tropical storm winds. It depends how you where they're categorizing it. Um, in the U.S., it's 39 miles per hour, and 38 is a tropical depression. Well, that's at least how NOAA categorized it. But we are getting 40 mile per hour winds in here, and I saw earlier that a NOAA buoy in this area has definitely got near tropical storm force winds, and they're going to send a hurricane hunter out this afternoon. And when that data gets in, we will make a second live stream on that whole subject. But we could be seeing a tropical depression right here, and we just don't know if it, if it is. But it may be, and this could be a tropical depression or even a tropical storm right now. And if indeed it is a tropical depression or storm, then it has a lot of room to continue to grow to expand and to develop and what we're going to be seeing is it's just going to continue moving this way and it's going to make that northwestward turn kind of going to affect the east coast of florida like the comment of the day stated and it will continue to move north along the coast all the way past north carolina virginia south carolina delaware east maryland new jersey Long Island in Southeast New York, Connecticut, Long Island, Massachusetts, and Maine, Vermont. This entire East Coast, even Georgia, can get possibly a hurricane. And for the Northeast to North Carolina, I believe possibly a Category 2 hurricane could be on, 
on our way, and the last time we had a Cat 2 affect the Northeast New York City area was Hurricane Sandy, which was technically a superstorm. And the last time we had a storm affect the Northeast in general was Tropical Storm Fay earlier this year. So now we're just going to head over uh, to 2 p.m. tomorrow. Or today, sorry about that. And we have 39 miles per hour. We have patches of strong winds. And let's jump over to 7 p.m. tonight. And wow, we can see larger patches of these stronger winds. 37 miles per hour. And this is definitely tropical depression force winds. Definitely. Going to be some tropical depression force winds in here. So we have to watch this very carefully. Because it has a lot of room to develop over the next few days into the next week. And this could be this could have very major impacts in the east, southeast, and northeast coasts. Now, now we're going to jump to 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And wow, we can see some stronger winds over here of 42 miles per hour. And we're probably going to see like a 45 mile per hour max. So this is definitely tropical storm force winds in this area and now we're gonna jump all the way over to Thursday 8 a.m. and wow we can definitely see these winds starting to pick up we can see 44 miles per hour and that's kinda of like the darkest shade but let's head over to 2 p.m. and now we can see a lot of that purple the wind speeds will definitely be increasing 47 let's go to 12 a.m. Interesting. But we can definitely see 44 miles per hour, 40, let's jump to 7 a.m. Friday. Again, in the 40s, 4 p.m. Friday, 47, I would say like 50s and max. And you can actually start seeing that eye, very defined eye, by now. And let's jump all the way to 2 a.m. Saturday. She didn't move that much, and, whoa. 8 a.m. Sunday, and for some reason, it uh, disappears. It disappears over here, and for some reason, windy.com is just showing it disappear right here, and not heading up here. It shows it just here, it just shows it just dying off. I'm not sure what happens. I'm not sure what windy.com is saying. But most likely it's going to head up here towards east coast of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, etc. The entire east coast and even parts of Canada could get, like another comment said, a weak tropical storm or a tropical depression. And again, now we're just going to look for an eye. Again, we can't really see much of an eye around here, but we can see a little bit more buildup than there was yesterday. A little bit more circulation that we can see. And so now we're going to jump right over to my, our page of models here. And here's one of our spaghetti models. Uh, seems to not be loading. One second. Alright, we'll come back to this model later, but let's head over to Tropical Tidbits. Here's our global hurricane models. And as you can see, this pink one actually brings it right by the Jersey Shore, Maryland, North Carolina. And that's quite interesting. And a lot of them actually bring it into Florida, which is also quite worrying. I think Florida had enough storms for <laughs> the decade. But here's the, uh, I put the GFS. The GFS actually so it actually moved a little bit more east than it originally was going to be. But over here is maybe the strongest part. We could see some red from 980 to 970. And we could even see like 960 in some parts down here. So we could see some strengthening. And we could see a major storm. Not exactly Cat 3 Plus, but possibly a category 2 or category 1 storm and now we're going to jump over to the Canadian model and for the first time I think the Canadian model is actually right I said that yesterday too 
It actually shows it mostly going in the same way as the GFS and European model goes. A lot of these models bring it into Florida, but they also bring it affecting the northeast, southeast, quite strong storm. And we could probably see again like 960 MB for pressure and it could be a quite strong storm. So if you're on the east coast, anywhere on the east coast, you should probably just expect quite a strong storm in the next week. Here's, inten here's intensity guidance and... Please unlock your device for this. Uh, sorry about that. Um, seems as a uh, voice assistant activated. Um, but... Most of the models show it entering tropical storm status, and it actually might already be tropical storm status. As this model is showing, it's already in tropical storm, the green, most likely. We still haven't got confirmation yet, but I believe the hurricane hunters will be lifting off shortly. I'm not sure exactly in the, the time, but let's take a look at our different models. Here's... Zero, zero, Z. These mostly show it staying in Tropical Storm. These ones show it actually entering Cat 1, a few of them. And let's try 12Z. Again, a lot of these show it going into the Category 1 status. And here's 18Z. And this one, say all of them make it mostly to Tropical Storm status. I'm not sure why it's saying it starts at 25 miles per hour, but... Oh, this is not even miles per, this is KT. Kilometers. But. You can mostly see it's going to head up here and it has a possibility to be major. Here's our infrared satellite. And, okay. Oh, come on. This has been happening recently. I'm not sure if this is caught by a bad internet connection or anything. It's supposed to be a loop, though. Well. Can you work with the Wi-Fi? Well. I believe we could just. Alright, here we go. Here's, um. Infrared satellite. And as you can see here, you can start to see a little bit of a buildup of an eye around here. Slowly as time passes. So we might be able to see some type of eye form in the next day or two. But now we're going to take a look at some more models. Again, we still are waiting for confirmation. But let's see if we can get... Sea surface temperatures. I'm not sure what's happening here. It's loading. I'm really sorry about all the problems here. For some reason, I think the internet's kind of not really working correctly. Here, here's our... Wow, this is annoying. Let's refresh. Huh. Yeah, I think there's an internet problem, everybody. I'm really sorry that this is happening. Uh, let's attempt it again. But. For some reason, things aren't loading correctly. Hmm. Here's as a favorite moi- Yeah, this is um, getting quite annoying. I'm sorry, everybody who's watching this. I guess this is a problem with being live. I don't want to disconnect from the Wi-Fi, though. Because I don't want to end the live stream. This is still going, right? Yeah, I'm still, I'm really sorry, everybody. I guess this is not loading. It says it's... Alright, I guess we'll have to wait this out. I don't really want to end the live stream here. 
I haven't showed all the information, but I'll keep trying links and of course they're not going to work. I guess I just go to the websites that they're featured on. For example, here's Chocolate Tidbits. It's running fine. Well, I guess this is a good time to look at our Hurricane HQ forecast. And as you can see here, this red cone is our impacts area. And just, I have to say, but just don't use this to make decisions. Use the official info. This is just to help you understand the official info. So our predictions is that the main, can I move this? Oh. The, the main, this is getting really annoying. The main impacts will be in this red cone. Sorry that this thing's acting up. But as you can see down where the X is to the left of it, this cone is the impact zone. We're, we're gonna, we're, I kind of shortened it. It's not really going to enter the Gulf, but East Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, East Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Southeast New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maine, Massachusetts, Vermont, all these areas, you could expect some impacts. And it really depends if the storm develops into something stronger. It may not develop, like a lot of models are showing it, we not stay weak in a tropical storm or a hurricane, but our predictions is that it will most likely get to a category two as it hits around here. And there's actually a patch of warm water right around here, which probably should help increase the uh, development right around here. We could see a category one, category two, and possibly a category three for the Northeast to North Carolina area. But get three is kind of unlikely. Now let's take a look at our here. Let's just refresh this page. I would like to show the map of the wind shear, and it's not going to work, of course. Well, what we could do is we can. Just go to the websites here. Let's try something else. Um, all right. Yeah, this is not going to work. Yeah, we can. We're just going to head to the websites because this is really having problems. Spectrum News. All right. Let's try and. Baynews9.com. We could just visit the websites. Oh no. Well, I think the entire browser is. crashing. How about we just try and close things? I know I'm trying to troubleshoot. I'm trying to troubleshoot. Troubleshoot. Sorry. Oh come on. I don't want to close Chrome. All right, everybody. We have to switch to another browser and try this. I believe this should work. And I just want to make sure. Okay, yeah. We can open this browser. So now we can finally, I finally 
fixed it. Here's our uh, sea surface temperatures. As you can see, this warm water, and here's that patch of warm water I was telling you guys about. Right here, this actually might help it develop as it hits North Carolina, South Carolina, and possibly the Jersey Shore to Long Island area. This may, might help it increase its strength just a little bit. Maybe it'll help it get past Category 2 status. I'm not sure. But what I believe is it's most likely going to become a hurricane somewhere around here between Florida and the West Indies. So now we're going to head over to our wind shear map. And as you can see, we have some wind shear over here. And this actually might weaken the storm a little bit as it passes over Puerto Rico. But once it gets past that, it most likely will continue to strengthen over the Bahamas and affects the East Coast. We also have another map to show you. Um, one second. Yes, here's the atmospheric moisture. And, okay. So there's a few things actually causing it to be a, little, a bit more dry over here. I believe one factor is the Saharan dust currently passing over here. It's, ca it's coming from over here and it can span over here so you can see some dry spots but at least the air is still moist on this map scale. So it shouldn't affect it too much but it might weaken it just a little bit. And if you'd like we could take a look at the Saharan dust map. All right, I can't seem to find the Saharan dust map, but first we'll take a look at our trop tropical. And why is it showing this map? Here, here's the tropical intensity index, and this entire area is highly favorable. The reason over here it's a little less favorable is because of the Saharan dust again and the air. But this entire area very favorable and even up here. So this actually might strengthen it a bit. It's coming from around here. It might weaken a bit and then strengthen as it hits up there. Also, we'd like to take a look at um, water temperatures and they're quite warm in the 80s, even up to here, the Gulf Stream warming this water. I believe that's what's causing the increase in water temperature up there. And all the way down here, you could see water temperatures kind of remain the same all around this area. It's a very warm type of year. And yeah. Oh, here's the Saharan dust forecast. As you can see, there's a lot of Saharan dust over here. Um, it's kind of infesting over here. I guess it's a slightly more concentrated over here, and that's why the weakening is happening. And we'll take a look at our forecast tracks for August, since we are just about to be enter August. And this is kind of like where the storm will be in this area. And it will come over here, and it's likely to hit the East Coast in all these areas. So we have a high chance of it actually developing and continuing to grow and develop even more. And here's our hurricane models, and we're around August 1st. So we're starting to peak up the large hill. Of course, the top is September. And I guess I can't click on this, but this is the South Simpson wind scale. And tropical depression is 0 to 38 miles per hour. Tropical storm. Actually, I don't see why this is. It's not considered a tropical depression. I believe it's only 38, but tropical storm, it's 39 to 73 miles per hour. And we're actually past that, according to windy.com. And all it needs to do is get to 74 miles per hour 
to become a Category 1 hurricane, and then it doesn't take much after that to really get to a Category 2. Although it gained to a Cat 3, so a little bit low, and it's kind of un unexpected. And now we're going to take a look at our severe weather in the U.S. I'd like to bring this up. So, basically just thunderstorms all around the country and marginal risk in the Northeast. But I just wanted to bring this up real quick. Since we're here, and if you're wondering, marginal is only isolated severe thunderstorms are possible. possible and not, more, not much intensity or even small hail like they're showing here. And this, again, lightning and flooding threats exist with all thunderstorms, and this is for most of the country. Now we're going to take a look at the Atlantic Basin, and you can see a bit of an eye starting to form right here. Right now it's a big mess, but you can start to see the eye kind of form, and that's what the National Hurricane Center is looking for, to really consider this a 90% chance in the next two days. Right now, it's only an 80% chance, but they will inc most likely increase it to 90 once we see that more of an eye formation. And let's head over to windy.com. And again, down here, we're going to take a look at our wind speeds, and we can start to see a bit of rotation around here. We're seeing, it looks like this is the eye around here. If we zoom in, we can see rotation right around here. So finally, we have located the eye after two days of not seeing one. We finally see it. And like we said earlier, we have wind speeds of... And it's in knots, but of course it's in knots. Uh, I don't really understand that knots as much, but... I believe this is the exact same color as over 38 miles per hour and that's what we're seeing so now we're going to jump over to our NOAA hurricane center check on the status of that okay so breaking news now Invest 92L becomes potential tropical cyclone 9 as of 11 a.m. today, about one minute ago, and the formation potential is high, 80% chance in the next two days and a 90% chance in the next five days, and it's still, the eye is not as defined as they like, but we have maximum sustained winds of 35 knots or 40 miles per hour, which is officially tropical storm status um the only reason it's not a tropical storm looks like it is because that eye is not as defined and it's not as clear but most likely in the next few hours we will see that and when the storm is considered either a tropical depression or tropical storm we will note we will make a new live stream only for that but now it's potential tropical cyclone nine and that's what we will refer to it as of 11 a.m. today. Uh, it's currently moving 23 miles per hour west. And it's going to most likely make that northwestward turn in the next day or two. And it speed up a little bit since it's 23 miles per hour. And again, it's spinning maximum sustained winds at 35 knots or 40 miles per hour and it looks like this is the only storm in the Atlantic right now but it's we will now refer to it as potential tropical cyclone 9 now we're gonna head back over to Mike's weather page and as you can see potential and it now does not have the development area because it has official it officially has developed and now it will begin to head northwestward and it looks like we officially have a cone 
Repeat. It looks like we officially have some sort of pwn. So it looks like we have some sort of cone right up. Of course, this definitely can change. Um, we'll head over to Noah's official page right now and see if it does have a cone available on here, which it does. So officially has a cone. So far, it doesn't show a hurricane coming up. It shows it's staying as a tropical storm until it hits here. And we'll have to see if it decides to hit Florida or continue on that northeast turn right now it looks like tropical storm warnings are currently issued for puerto rico and the west indies islands current wind extent is tropical storm force around this area of the atlantic and let's head to the full forecast the question is will it tilt into florida or will it tilt this way into the northeast let's get our arrival times of winds and as you can see, um, all the way by here, we'll have Friday 8 p.m. is when we'll be getting these storms up here, or the winds up here. And as you can see, Friday 8 a.m., Thursday 8 p.m., and continuing. And we can start getting winds in the West Indies by tomorrow at 2 a.m. Now let's take a look at the earliest, mo or the most likely. And again, very similar forecast, Saturday 8 p.m. by Florida. Here's the wind speed probability for tropical storm force winds. And as you can see over here, there's a high chance of 60 to 90% chance. Right here was a 100% chance because it is currently creating that right now. And let's take a look at our 50 knot wind speed probability. They're kind of low, 5 to 10, possibly 20. 30% chance at max but now let's take a look at our hurricane wind speed and this is very low not even 5% at all just a 0% right now this can definitely change though so let's again let's take a look at our warnings cone this is the interactive map and yeah it's heading this way as you can see we have tropical storm warnings currently in effect for these islands over here so if you're in these areas prepare now follow what the warnings say if they order you to evacuate because of storm surge do so and we'll have to watch it for the florida we have to watch and especially the east to northeast because if this storm does change the cone and does start to head into the atlantic ocean then this could be a serious problem for not only the southeast, but also the northeast, and even parts of Canada could get, again, a weak tropical storm to a tropical depression, like one of our comments stated. Now we're going to take a look at our spaghetti models again, at tropical tidbits, and you can see these models do show it entering Florida, but it most likely will come back out into the water. And right here is our heavy water so it might come out as a tropical storm and develop into a hurricane possibly and this may affect north carolina and even parts of the northeast we've seen this year recently with um hannah hurricane hannah developed very rapidly into a category one hurricane and it was not even expected to become anything close to a hurricane really only a weak tropical storm and it developed very quickly in a very small amount of water. And it wasn't even as warm as it could be now. So this is a serious concern. And we have to watch this very closely to make sure nothing goes unpredicted. And here is our GFS model showing it head all the way over here. And there's high possibility. Even if it does enter Florida, it will come back, back out and follow up the East Coast. Now here's the Canadian model. And it looks like, so far, the cone is taking it into the Canadian model's way. And it's taking it right through Florida, up the coast. And most likely going to do a lot of damage along the coast if it, be do if it does become a hurricane. And again, some of the models do show it entering hurricane status and some don't. 
We'll have to see in the next few days, and we have to watch this very closely. Here's zero Z. Here's O six. O twelve. And here is our eighteen. Again, we'll have to watch this a lot. We have to pay attention to this because this can be our next major storm. And I think I'm going to end the video here. But our next update will be out before 7 p.m. tonight. Or at least we'll start before 7 p.m. Thank you all for watching. And again, one more time, we're going to take a look at our model here. Again, it may affect Florida, but we're most likely not affect the Gulf as much. May heavy waves, high surf, but this cone is still valid because it may affect east to central Florida. And again, here's our comment of the day. And thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. And make sure you comment below, and yeah. What do you think? Will it become a hurricane or remain as a tropical storm? And do you think it will affect the Northeast? Comment below. Anything to add, change, anything I could do to make the video better? Comment below. Comment anything you would like to comment, anything. Just, I'll listen to all the things you have to say. Anything to make the channel better. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.